After the attack on the White House, it was discovered that a number of key personnel had been captured throughout the city. One of these people included Kenley College student Eva Garcia. But why did she find her treatment as a captive of the Black Tusk so pleasant? Eva Garcia, a history major at Kenley College, returned to campus after a Thanksgiving spent with her family. Alongside her studies, Eva ran a podcast where she spoke about whatever was on her mind with the side objective of gaining extra credit. After the outbreak, Kenley College faced a drastic change as the school closed its doors due to the escalating crisis. The effects of the outbreak quickly became apparent as students and faculty started falling ill. Eva, caught in the midst of the chaos, found her dormitory transformed into a makeshift quarantine facility. The overwhelmed healthcare could no longer handle the growing number of sick students. With no other choice, Eva made the difficult decision to leave Kenley College and head back to her home in Florida. Leaving behind the safety of the college, Eva found herself on a dubious ride towards Washington, D.C. She made the decision to exit the vehicle and seek alternative means of getting back to her family. Hey, Mom. I don't even know if you're getting these, but I wanted to let you know we left Kenley. I'm on my way. It just might take me a little longer than expected. Chad was, well, he was Chad, and I knew I shouldn't have gotten in his car, but it was that or wait for a Sarah evacuation bus. Chad seemed like the safer option. I'm okay. He tried some stupid shit, but I'm okay. We were outside of Baltimore, so I'm just going to head down 95 until I can get another ride or get home to you, whichever comes first. Mom? If you get this, make me pasole. Eventually, Eva would have to abandon her long walk home. The weather was getting too much to handle, so she decided to wait it out until spring with a local community she stumbled across. Hey, Mom. It's not really safe to travel right now. The roads are questionable and the weather is bullshit. I thought it was supposed to get warmer the further south you went, but this winter is like extra cold and snowy. Maybe in the spring I can start walking again. But for now, I found this group, and I think it's smarter if I stay with them for a while. They set up a community in an apartment complex outside of D.C. They've got plenty of food, and there's even some people talking about building rooftop gardens and raising chickens in the spring, if they can find some chickens. I hope you're getting these. I'm a little worried that you haven't called me back, and now your phone is going straight to voicemail. Mom, call me back, okay? I love you. From the Division Recruited novel, we learn that this settlement, or community, called Athena, was a village in the hollowed out remnants of a city. The building had once been luxury condos inhabited by the wealthy. When the dust had settled, a group of survivors had gathered there, determined to make the best of it. The concentration of almost 40 families was no accident. They huddled together for safety. In the wake of the viral apocalypse, the most dangerous thing left in the world was other people. Myra, Recruited's protagonist, was pushed into the role of Athena's head of community security, and whether she wanted it or not, she was the best person for the job. However, over time, the position had forced her to make some calls that rubbed people the wrong way, and in some cases, led to a loss of life. Hey mom, you didn't call me back. Kind of just hoping you forgot to charge your phone, or the local tower is out, or you know cell phones don't work in Florida anymore. But in case you're still worried about me, I just wanted to let you know I'm good. Athena's a pretty chill place. We get attacked every once in a while, but we've got food. And Myra's making sure we're safe. And I even made a friend. Her little brother, Kazi. Don't worry, it's not romantic or anything. We're just friends. He's barely 18, so yeah, a little young for me. Don't worry, Mom. Although it could help pass the time, there's no danger of me getting knocked up by some kid while I wait out the apocalypse in Maryland. Love you. Call me back. As we would find out later on in the story, it wouldn't remain happy and peaceful at Athena for very long. Athena would come under attack by the outcasts. Although Myra had put many hours into preparing the community for this very event, there was just too many of them. However, just before their last lines of defense would fall, the sudden appearance of division agents came to their rescue. Athena would survive another day, but the community was looking a little worse for wear with a number of casualties. Myra, having done the absolute best that she could with what she had at hand, was praised by the leader of the division cell. But upon learning of their mission, to find out why supply shipments weren't making it through, and if fixed, how this could help the community, Myra asked to join them, 
provided that Athena would be cared for. Hey, Mom. Pretty sure you'll never get this, but if you do, I wanted to let you know we're moving. Guess you shouldn't believe everything people say about the Division. Some agents saved Athena last week, lost one of their own in the fight, and Myra joined them on some secret mission bullshit. Between losing her and the damage to the complex, and with winter coming, it's really not smart for us to stay here anymore. Honestly, it hasn't been the same since Kazi died. True son's got him. Anyway, the Division offered to take us in. I sent a group to move us to the castle. I don't know if that's code or if we're, like, really moving into a castle, but, yeah. If you ever get your phone working again and check your voicemail, you can find me at the castle. I miss you, Mom. Love you. Hope you're not dead. Fuck. Sorry, Mom. Sorry. Call me back, okay? I love you. Bye. Eventually, the JTF would take Eva and a number of the remaining Athena settlers to the recently reopened castle settlement. Over time, Manny would assess Eva for job placement to find the perfect fit for how she could do her part in the running of this new community. He would eventually learn of her media background and ask if she would like to get the settlement radio back up and running to play music, make announcements, and overall boost morale. Eva agrees. But it wasn't so long after this time that Eva, along with a number of other personnel, were forcibly abducted by the Black Tusk. Agents receive intelligence on Eva's possible location at the Eclipse Fuel Depot and quickly mobilize to clear the area of hostile True Sons and secure the outpost. However, their search proves fruitless as Eva is nowhere to be found. Frustration mounts as the agents regroup, but Manny interrupts their disappointment with urgent news. He announces a huge surge of Black Tusk activity at the Department of Justice, raising the possibility of finding leads on Eva's whereabouts. The agents redirect their focus and set off towards the Department of Justice. Agents proceed, maneuvering through the courtyard and engaging in combat with the True Sons. They would make their way through to the underground car park. Finally, they come face to face with a high value target. After dispatching the hostile leader, the agents would discover a crucial clue, a piece of abandoned communication equipment that points to Eva's possible whereabouts. The urgency of the situation intensifies as they realize she may be at the Navy Plaza. Great. Another stop on the worst tour of the city. Like, Navy Plaza's cool, I guess. But unless you really like military history or, like, a true patriot or some shit, it's just like a pit with flagpoles. Agent, get to Navy Plaza. Agents swiftly converge on the compound. The True Sons have fortified the area, but the agents, undeterred, navigate the barricades and overcome wave after wave of hostile forces. Their perseverance pays off as they successfully neutralize two prominent leaders within the True Sons ranks. Amid the chaos of battle, another communication from Eva is discovered. It becomes evident that she is deliberately leaving behind hints and breadcrumbs, leading the agents closer to her location. With this new information, the agents follow Eva's trail and fight on to ensure her safe return. Hostile radio with intercepted. Cool. Archive. It's like being back in the library at Kenway. Except, you know, more boring. And with less people making out in the stacks. Where the hell are you taking me? We're closing in on them. Eva's at the National Archives. Agents confront fierce resistance from the True Sons upon arriving at the entrance of the National Archive building. They navigate the structure, eliminating hostiles, and definitely not getting lost again. Eventually, they would face off against a True Sun leader, once eliminated, Manny's voice would once again be heard over the earpieces. Wasting no time, he announces the discovery of Eva's whereabouts. She is at the Viewpoint Museum. The True Sons have fortified the facility, posing a formidable challenge for the agents. With unwavering determination, they fight their way through the heavily guarded entrance. As they delve deeper into the facility, waves of enemies grow in size and intensity, until eventually they come face to face with another rogue agent. However, the agents come prepared, armed with their shooty shocky lightning gun that swiftly dispatches the rogue. Pressing forward, they reach the broadcasting area where the True Sons make their final stand. Among them, Lieutenant Thompson stands as their final challenge. But while all of this is playing out, 
the JTF arrives, mounting a successful rescue operation to secure Eva Garcia and bring her back to the safety of the castle settlement. Once Eva was safely back at the castle settlement, many would check in on her. Eva, what did she make you do? Who? Sokolova. Oh, not? Well, she didn't really make me do anything. Like, she wanted me to record some radio show to entertain the troops, but it wasn't a big deal or anything. You don't think that's weird? Not really. You asked me to do the same thing. Yeah? But how did she know that you're a DJ? Well, she said she liked my podcast. Was sorry I never got the extra credit since the school sort of died. Natalia listened to your podcast? What else did she tell you? Nothing, really. Played me some Isaac recordings, tried to get me to use them on the show. Uh, Manny, you might want to stop taking your comms to bed. The Black Tusks know, like, way too much about your sex life, dude. But Eva said that everything was all good. She even referred to Natalia as Nat, like they were close friends now. Natalia even said that she used to listen to a podcast at Kenley College. She wanted Eva to record a radio show to entertain the troops. Sort of a morale-boosting thing. And Eva pointed out that this isn't so much different to what Manny wants her to do. But she did say that Natalia asked her to play some Isaac recordings on her show. Maybe this was to be used as a propaganda piece. The Black Tusk soldiers have been fighting for a few months now. Perhaps this was to pick them up and remind them what they're fighting for. The future of the country. And to get there, they need to remove that rogue operation calling themselves the Division. So once again, we're hearing that the target that was supposedly being held captive was actually well cared for by the Black Tusk. So are the Black Tusk actually the good guys? No, I'm not going to humor this for even one second. The amount of crap they have pulled over the previous months 100% says otherwise. This is just a ploy to gain more support for their side. If you were going to take over the country and label yourself as the legitimate savior, you'd have an easier time with the support of more than just the military under your employment. You want the community leaders, the voices, the ones going above and beyond to rebuild society. With that support behind you, there would be few that wouldn't have a hard time fighting against you. Natalia is using a new tactic. Attacking the division head-on has proven ineffective time and time again. Now, she is going after the one thing that the division needs to survive more than anything else. The support of society, the vulnerable, the innocent. Without them, there really isn't too much more they have to fight for. The government is gone. The infrastructure is more or less obsolete in most major cities that we are aware of. Society was the last thing that the division was fighting for. And if they have already chosen which side is the right side, what more use are the division to the people of the US? Fortunately, even the most recently rescued civilian, Eva Garcia, doesn't believe a word Natalia is saying. Kindness. How fucking cool is that? In the face of unspeakable evil and certain death, this group of chaos demons chose to dig into their trauma and be nice to people. Don't fall for that shit. This is like day one of Fascism 101. Do you want apartheid or indentured servitude? Because that's how you get apartheid and indentured servants. So this was a great target to be rescuing. I personally loved Eva's recordings at Kenley College. Not necessarily for the content of what she was saying, but more for the intelligent yet super sassy way of presenting it. I actually felt a bit of the writer's personality coming out in this character this time around. And I told Lauren that. Although I'm not sure she actually appreciated it, I meant it in the nicest possible way. I'm actually really glad that Eva has been brought in, and I hope that we hear more from her over the seasons. Her youthful edginess is appreciated, and a nice contrast to some of the other characters. I mean, they said in the John Yazzie rescue that he was good for her, but I think it's the other way around. He is such a downer. Hopefully she'll be able to help him move on. However, the next time you're close to the propaganda open world activities, after you capture it, have a listen. This is your new favorite DJ, Eva Garcia. The mouth from the south. That's a terrible catchphrase. Forget I said that. So, Manny vetoed my come for the fish taco stay for the company slogan idea. Said people might think it's perverted or something. Like, some of the most beautiful people have done the most horrific things, and we excuse their shitty ass behavior because we want to fuck them. And now we think about that and are like horrified. That's the same shit with Nat. Like, she's hot, so you want to smash, and that excuse the fact that she, like, indiscriminately murders people every day and then says, Join us! We are here to protect you! I've sat around recording for, like, 30 minutes, and I'm still hearing new ones. 
because they don't seem to play in a sequence, they all seem to be random. Also, this target came with another crossover with the recruited novel, and I feel like this was the largest crossover we've had yet. Eva was in the Athena settlement at the same time as Myra, and she knew her. I actually went back and read the first three chapters again, just to make sure there wasn't any reference to Eva, because, you know, that would have blown my mind. If I hadn't already said it, I'm really liking how these new seasons are playing out. Not just the gameplay, but also the story behind some of the new slash not so new characters. I feel like we're learning a lot more about them, and getting a far clearer gauge on what they're about, and how they will influence the community going forward. I guess it also helps that we aren't just killing them at the end of each mission too. Anyway, I think that will do it for now. Thank you once again for watching, and Extremis Mullis, Extrema Remedia.